Having studied gradients and contours and the relationship, we're going to work through a little longer example where we put all these ingredients together. And we're also going to highlight one of the perhaps technically fishy details we put in before that we said the gradient is perpendicular to a contour, but what that means when we have a curve contour, well, you can't be perpendicular to a curve. So what we actually mean is perpendicular to a tangent line to that curve. Then we can talk about two straight lines that actually are perpendicular one to the other. Let's explore how all this would work in the context of this function here, x times y squared. All right, we're looking for a contour that passes through the point 2, 1. So we go to 2, 1. There's going to be some contour that goes through that. What contour is it? Well, it's the contour that's going to have the same height as the function at 2, 1. f of 2, 1 is 2 times 1 squared, or 2. So 2 equals x, y squared is the contour through the point 2, 1. So there is an equation for a contour level curve all the points that satisfy this have height 2, and the point 2, 1 also has height 2. Let's find the gradient at that point. Again, these are things that should be perpendicular to each other somehow. We're going to tease that out in a second. Our function again is x, y squared. The x derivative is just y squared, and the y derivative is 2xy. We want that evaluated at the point, 2, 1. At the point, 2, 1. f sub x will be 1. And f sub y will be 2 times 2 times 1 is 4. OK, we've got some pieces here. So what we have here is we've added a vector to our diagram at the point, 2, 1. We now have a vector that points to the right by 1 and 4 up, so something like that. That would be our gradient vector at the point 2, 1. All right. Now let's find an equation for the tangent line. OK, notice we've changed dimensions here a little bit. We have a contour, which was 2 equals x, y squared. That's some kind of curve in the plane. What we want to find is the tangent line at this point. So imagine some graph. We might get this wrong for the moment, but there's some graph. And we're going to try to find the tangent line to that. Well, this is a flashback to the fall term, but you don't know how to do this. We're going to need the y versus x slope, so straight fall term calculation here. We need the dy versus dx slope. For this particular function, well, it's not a function, actually, because we have a y squared. It's a relation. Uh, we're going to need to do, how do I get dy dx out of this? Implicit derivatives. We need an implicit derivative. We're going to take the regular x derivative of the 2, and we're going to take the regular x derivative of the xy squared. Remember, implicit derivatives take the derivative of both sides, and that's going to give us 0. We need a product rule here. 1 times y squared, and now y is a function of x, so this is not a partial, this takes a bit of brain wrapping, but we're talking about a curve in the plane, and so we can talk about x, and then the x derivative of y, which would be 2y dy dx. So dy dx is going to equal minus y squared over 2xy, or minus y over 2x. OK. So this was a curve in x and y. We've now found a formula for the slopes. And so our tangent line is going to have the slope that we need there at 2, 1. The slope is going to be negative 1 over 2 times 2, negative 1 over 4. So our tangent line is L of x is, back to one dimension, slope times x minus 2 
plus the y point, which was 1. There we go. A point, or a line rather, through the point 2, 1 with slope negative 1 quarter. That's actually pretty close there. So probably looks something like that. Take a while to absorb what happened there, because that is something that is a flashback to earlier material. It's something that helps draw these diagrams, but it also helps either confuse or clarify what we're talking about when we're talking about different derivatives. Let's take a look at how all these pieces would fit together. We're at the point 2, 1. We found the gradient vector was 1, 4, 1, 4. That's our gradient vector. We also found that the tangent line was L of x is negative 1 quarter slope x minus 2 plus 1. So it passes through this point and has slope negative 1 quarter. So down 1 every 4 we go across. And probably about there. And last but not least, the actual curve itself. That was 2 equals xy squared. We could try to rewrite that uh, in terms of y, 2 over x. And so y is equal to square root of 2 over x. And what that would look like is one of those usual asymptote things with some scaling and stuff. But it would look something like this kind of curve here. And it would be tangent to the tangent line, of course, and then probably something like that. We could plug in some points and find that out in a little more detail. But this would be our curve. This would be our tangent line. And the most important thing is that these two things here, 1 over 4 up or 4 over 1 down, these things here are going to be perpendicular to one another, just as we predicted. But more specifically, the tangent line to this curve is going to be perpendicular to the gradient that we found. Here's a more detailed view of the contour diagram. It has the contour of height 2 shown, as well as the other points. And again, if we draw our gradient vector, it'll go up to 3, 5 here. There we go. That's our gradient vector. And you ask yourself again, out of all the directions that we could move in from this point, which direction would take us uphill the fastest for short little steps? Well, we want to get to the four contour as quickly as possible. This is the way to get there. We want to head directly towards it. And that would be, especially on these nice zoomed in version, perpendicular to the contour that we see here, or again, more precisely, perpendicular to a tangent line, which is roughly sketched there. Let's try that a bit better. More like that. So that would be our tan That's not right. <laughs> there we go. I give up. So a tangent line to that curve, which is pretty straight at the point we're looking at, the gradient will be perpendicular and also pointing uphill in the steepest direction. Last but not least, as a quick summary here, these new ideas of the gradient and the directional derivative can definitely be confusing. Here are some touchstones you can all come back to, always come back to. D-U-F-A-B. Read that as the directional derivative of a function at a point in a direction of u. Why? Because if you put yourself on a surface, there's only one thing that can mean. What's the slope, the single number? So it's a slope or rate of change with a specific direction. Contrast that with one of the building blocks that goes into that calculation. The gradient is a separate thing. It's always going to be a vector. If I'm at a point, I do some calculations, I get a direction vector. That direction has all those nice properties we talked about. It's the direction of maximum increase of our function, and its length tells you how steep the surface would be in that, at that point if you were moved in the direction of the gradient. But the gradient is a vector because it's a direction. OK, what direction would I go in to go the fastest uphill? That's what the gradient tells us. So just be as clear as possible when you're studying about what these two things are, what they mean, and how to calculate them. 
they're used, oh, I, in fact, I was just teaching another course where the gradient and the vector field that comes out of looking at the gradient is used in geology and geography, as well as in uh, mechanical engineering. So this stuff does show up in a wide variety of different areas later on. It behooves you to try to get them as clear as possible at this stage. It'll help you as we move through the last few weeks of the course.